Hi guys, Pat Mears from Rubix Realty and I'm here today with Mike Mortlock from MCG Quantity Surveying and we're just going to ask a few questions in relation to tax depreciation schedules and how they affect uh, the investment of a property and the return for a property investor. Thanks for having me Pat, I appreciate it. No worries. So why would an owner get a tax depreciation schedule completed on their purchase? Good question. It's a, it's a bit sort of like would a property investor like to have money back? That, that's what a depreciation schedule is. It, it, prov it provides money back in your pocket based on the decline in value or, or the wear and tear of the assets within the property. So essentially we, we do a report based on an inspection and from that we estimate the construction value of the dwelling, the value of the plant and equipment assets and then apply the depreciation rules by the tax office and essentially that'll give you what deductions you can claim off your taxable income for any particular financial year. So our average deductions in the first year around the $9,000 mark, depending on your taxable income depends on what you get back. But if you're paying six or $700 to get say $3,000 back, it's a pretty important thing to do for cash flow. Yeah, good return on investment. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so there's been changes in the budget to depreciation. Mm. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so on, on budget night, which is now burnt into my mind as the 9th of May 2017, that they did announce that there were changes to depreciation on plant and equipment items for established property. So we take that to mean not a brand new property. So if you buy a property that's one year old or 20 years old, there'll be zero depreciation claim on the plant and equipment assets. The tax office gives us a list of what the plant and equipment assets are, but typically in a house that's carpets, blinds, ovens, cooktops, range hoods, hot water systems. So unless you buy that as a new asset yourself, so you might buy an old property and gut it, renovate it, put all those new assets in, you'll still be able to claim depreciation on those assets. But if you, if you bought the property and they were already there and it wasn't a new property, you won't be able to, to make a claim on those. So does that then affect someone's choice as to whether they go brand new or an older style? I think it will. I mean, there's, there's a greater incentive to buy brand new because you get those deductions. Then there's maybe on the other side a disincentive to buy a second-hand property, um, you, you know, w w I guess because you're, 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 you're not paying a premium for those deductions, but the, the new owner will. So it's interesting to, to sort of note what will be the decline in value in terms of sales from the first owner to the next when they lose those deductions. We don't see it as a, as a big driving force for people to buy brand new property. They're still going to be able to claim depreciation on the building structure, so that was unaffected. So any property built after the 16th of September 87, you'll still be able to claim that 2.5% on the building structure. And that's uh, around about 70% of the properties that we do are, are built after that date. So it, it's a difficult thing to model, it remains to be seen, but there's certainly an incentive to buy new. I think we'll probably find that more people will buy new? Will it sort of destroy the second-hand property market? I guess not, because when it comes to capital growth, depreciation is a, is a small part of the strategy. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess to talking about age of homes, there's often a misconception about an older place being worth doing mm. the depreciation schedule on. Yeah, well, we, we, we've done some, some analysis of our last 1,000 residential reports, which helped us to sort of comment on what the real world budget changes meant. Uh, and, and as I said, around about 70 of the, the properties are built after 1987. That obviously leaves around about 30 that are left. And of those 30% those that were built prior to the cutoff for the building structure, at least 60% of those have had a depreci uh, have had a renovation of significant value or sufficient value for a depreciation schedule to be worthwhile. So to put that another less confusing way, if the property was built in 1960 or 1970, there would be no claim on the original building structure, but it would be unusual for that property not to have a new kitchen, a new bathroom, and maybe even an extension. So you'll still be able to claim building depreciation on those improvements if they're after the cut-off date. So, so yeah, there is a misconception that it has to be built 
after that 1987 date to qualify. The plant equipment items qualify regardless of how old they are, but obviously the newer the better. And if it has been renovated, then there's chances are that there is a newer carpet, there's new kitchen appliances and that sort of thing. So there's no sort of blanket, uh, I guess, scenario where I would say it's definitely not worthwhile based on an age. It depends on the history of the property and what's been done. So that's part of what we do is we'll, we'll chat to the owner and say, how old is it? How long have you owned it? Have you made any improvements? Do you know if anyone has improved the property before? Okay, great. All right, well, thanks, Mike, for joining Pleasure. us. Pleasure. And if you've got any questions in relation to depreciation schedules, feel free to contact myself or Mike, and we'll be happy to answer those questions for you. Beautiful. Thanks for having me. No worries.